Hey guys, welcome to Total Tailgating at NTP. I'm your host, Brady Augustine, and today we are making the 40 Burger. So, I'm from Wisconsin, so my team is the Packers. It's draft night. My burger is going to be the Aaron Rodgers 40 Burger. I'm going to show you how we put ours together, and then we're going to invite you to go ahead and come up with your own. It, no matter what team you support, you can make your quarterback's 40 burger, send it to us, and then what we're going to do is we're going to choose the best one, and you're going to win $50 at NFL.com. So it's going to be a little bit of a fun kind of a competition and contest that we're doing, but first I want to show you my Aaron Rodgers 40 burger. All right, so check this out. Now, this is a little bit of a complicated burger. We have four meats involved, and our thinking behind that is we want 10 points per meat, so it turns into a 40 burger. So what we're gonna do and what you would need for this burger is we have on the bottom, we've got some a turkey patty. This is turkey, uh, ground turkey on the bottom. What we have, and ground turkey on the bottom, that is a classic California, California burger. So we've got the Aaron Rodgers California element represented there. On the top, we have a venison patty, which is, of course, very Wisconsin, which is where Aaron Rodgers is resident of now. Uh, on both sides, because these are very lean meats, they don't have much fat, both the venison and the turkey side, we have added some bacon that we actually, instead of cooking the bacon and laying it in later, what we're going to do is use that bacon to flavor that meat, make sure it stays juicy, and give us a nice crust. This is going to be a flat iron cooked burger. So the other thing that this the bacon will do for us is it's going to give us a smokiness that we are actually going to lose a little bit because we're cooking on a flat iron. But one of the key ingredients to this particular burger is to get that nice crust. So we got the smoky bacon to take up for the smoke that we're going to lose. And also, what we did is we took our venison and we went really simple with it. Some people like the gaminess of venison. This venison is absolutely delicious. I will tell you that one because we did do a test. And first of all, I want to give a huge shout out to my, my, uh, the folks that supplied our venison. Um, Lori and Jeremy, they were nice enough to give us some venison, and I truly appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Total shout out for get, getting that to me when I needed it because it's not something you can just go out and get, and I haven't been hunting for a while. Uh, also, Jeremy has been sick, so Jeremy, I just want to tell you, get well soon, buddy. I hope you are feeling better. Sounds like he's on the mend, so that's a good thing. But at any rate, we have, that's our three meats. We have our bacon on the outside, we've got turkey, and then on the other side of this patty is gonna be venison, to which we were very simple because the venison tastes so good. It's gonna add so much flavor. It's got the bacon. Well, the only things we added were a little bit of smoked paprika to that venison, and we also rolled in a little bit of fresh rosemary, which goes absolutely fantastic with all of your venison dishes. That's three meats, and finally, we are going to add to this a chicken fried steak fritter. All we did is kind of double dip this in flour, no egg, just dry uh, flour. And I, uh, that, the recipe for this was just a half cup of, a fl of flour with about two three finger pinches of salt and a little cracked pepper. The bacon's gonna give us plenty of saltiness, so I'm not concerned about that. Let me do hit this grill while we're at it to make sure that oil is hot enough by the time we get going because we're gonna to need to drop those in some nice hot oil. You want it to be shimmering on top. If you wanna check the temperature, probably a little over 350 is what you're gonna to wanna to shoot for. Okay, now one of the things that's a little bit special about this burger, if you're not a Packer fan, this may not make sense to you, but Aaron Rodgers, as many of you may know, has given up dairy. So one of the big questions with an Aaron Rodgers 40 burger is, are you seriously not gonna have cheese? I mean, this is a guy from Wisconsin. It just doesn't make sense not to have cheese on this burger. So we thought of all kinds of different vegan cheeses and things that we can do, but we decided to play a trick on Aaron Rodgers. So when we assemble this burger, instead of putting cheese on top, we are gonna put that turkey on the, uh, on the top. We're gonna put it in between. If you've ever been to, uh, if you've ever had a Juicy Lucy, this is very similar. It's the same technique. Now you notice one of the things is we broke, we just cut a square of cheese. Get your Wisconsin cheddar, Wisconsin people. If you're excited for the draft, you probably have Wisconsin cheddar in front of you right now. Let me just kind of disinfect real quick because I've been touching that meat. Of course, it's not gonna be perfect out here. But that is how we got our, our fourth meat involved and that is how we sneak the cheese in is just to play a little trick on Aaron Rodgers. All right, let's get grilling. We've got our oil hot. 
We've got our grill just ripping hot. We're gonna leave the door open on this and take each of our burgers with that bacon on it and lay it. I'm actually gonna lay it turkey side down first. And because I, we, you have turkey on the bottom, we want that cooked to a little bit different temperature. We'd like that cooked a little bit warmer than our red meat, but that venison is probably gonna get cooked through pretty well as well. Um, so we'll just throw those on turkey side down first. And we are gonna do a continuous flip method with these burgers. Rather than just let them go, uh, turn them once and let them cook out, we're gonna actually flip this every three minutes until we feel like we've got a medium well. And I may actually cook these a little more than I tend to prefer my beef burgers. But remember, you've got turkey on the bottom, which typically you're wanting to cook a little hot, hotter. And we also have venison on the top, which isn't a regulated product necessarily. So some of the controls may not be in place. And so every few minutes, I'm just gonna turn this. And while we get ready to do that, I do wanna mention my little spatula system. You know, notice I'm not using a, a large sort of grill spatula. Anytime I have my cast iron skillet on my grill, this is gonna give us that nice crust. You have to have contact to get that crust. But one of the things I like is this is my favorite setup to be working with my grill. And as long as I have my cast iron skillet on there, reaching across that skillet does not give me, it doesn't tend to burn my arm. So I'm okay with a short handled, the control that you get from a short handled uh, uh, spatula and a scraper is really my favorite way to run this. All right, so let's give these a turn. Again, we're gonna continually turn these because we've got bacon on there that can burn on us. We want it to, uh, we want it to brown up. We want to get that crust, and you see it already forming, but we are going to turn these burgers a little more than you normally would. And you can hear that sizzle. That's what you want. We know those things are cooking through. While we're doing that, actually, while we're doing that, we're going to make a side. We're going to have a couple sides. We've got a salad that we did, but one of the things we're going to add to this is we are going to grill up some asparagus. I mean, it's the end of April. It's asparagus season down here. And uh, all you need to do with your asparagus, I got this from the grocery store. Now, if you're growing your own, this asparagus is gonna be tender. When you break it off and pick it, it's gonna tell you where it's tender. But if you take this home from the grocery store, some of this is gonna be, it's gonna be tough and woody at the bottom. So one of the things you wanna do, I'm not gonna cut this because my knife does not know where it needs to be cut. All I'm gonna do is bend my asparagus until it breaks. And it's gonna tell you uh, where that toughness is and you can see how the toughness is higher you're gonna lose a significant amount of that but that is just really inedible as somebody who grew up on homegrown asparagus that just doesn't work for me okay so to this we are simply going to add a little bit of olive oil I've just got one of these handy little squirt bottles we're gonna just squirt on a little bit of olive oil for that and a little a three finger I may do two three finger pinches of salt kosher salt on there and let's crack some black pepper on there while we're at it that fresh cracked pepper is really delicious and go ahead and get those on the grill and while I'm doing this you know I'm gonna toss that just a little bit but it is just about time to go ahead and uh, flip our burgers one more time so let's get these on the grill I do want them spread out a little bit we'll do that in a minute Let's give this another flip. Again, this is a continuous flip method. It's not the usual way to do it, but it is a good way to get a nice crust on your burgers. I saw it first on steaks. It works real well for that. And again, I've got real good control with this setup that I've got here. Um, I got one that wants, got one that fell and one that wants to go. You can throw these in a pan. Uh, I like to get grill marks on them if I can, so I'm just leaving them as they are. And right now, I'm just gonna take a quick test and see where we're at. We're firming up nicely already on those patties. So this continuous flip method, what I'm looking for now is maybe to just get, get a little bit more browning on that bacon, and then I think those will be ready to go soon. So now we're ready to go ahead and make this fritter. Now this is different, I've never seen this before. I came up with this on my own. Uh, maybe somebody has done it, but this is just carne asada that we basically cut into a small square. And what we did is dip it in that flour mixture that I was telling you, half a cup of flour, um, two, three finger pinches of salt, a little bit of, of pepper. Again, we've got plenty of salt in our bacon, so we don't have to worry about that. And then what we did is pound this as flat as we can. 
So this is gonna cook really quickly. I can see our oil is scorching hot, probably a little hotter than it needs to be. But we drop that in there and it literally is only gonna take a minute or so. It will not take long at all. So I wanna watch that really closely. I may turn my asparagus a little bit here. And it's only gonna need about 30 seconds aside. I'm gonna hit this burger right here. I just wanna get a little more crust on that bacon. And I think this is already ready to turn. Again, I pounded this as thin and flat, and you can see how crispy that fritter is gonna be. It's just gonna be a nice crunchy top, uh, crunchy topping to our burger. And again, we've got a burger without beef right now, so you had to throw in some beef, and now you have it, okay? That's gonna be ready literally in seconds. It is cooked, um, all, gonna be cooked all the way through. Our burgers are looking good. If you wanna get a close up of this, one of the things we did is we did two different methods. We cubed up our bacon and put that down, and I think that is browning better. The other way to do it is just cut some slices in half and lay them in, but you can see these are tending to curl up, and I actually like that it took a little more work to do it this way, but we're getting a better crust on that. All right, I'm gonna flip that back around and try and get some crust on that side. And this is definitely done. I should have some paper towels, I just don't have any. But you can see because that's so thin, it is nice and crispy right now. And that's gonna be really good on the top of our burgers. We did, in case you, don't, in case you haven't done this before, we tried this already, it was freaking good. It was really delicious. All right, so I'm gonna lay that out so we can prep that in a minute. Give this one more turn. Now I don't like my asparagus overcooked and wilted. So that is basically, to me, going to be ready just about the time that our burgers are done. Let's give them a check. I am getting a little bit of separation in one, and I can see a little pinkness. I should have pressed that one down. That may have been the one that I made when we did the show. The other ones, hopefully, will hold up a little bit better. But I am going to look. One of the things you need to note, if you're making, I don't know if any of you have been to Minneapolis, or Minneapolis, I think it is, Minnesota, and had a Juicy Lucy. One of the things, I've never made it this way before. It is delicious. One of the things it does is it makes that turkey burger not dry out on you. It is juicy and delicious. And again, we're cooking it more than I generally and typically would cook a beef burger. The other thing you need to know though, is if, you, if your technique for checking doneness is to just, there's tons of different ways to do it. You can touch it here and then touch your chin for medium well. You can touch it here and then touch your hand, whatever, whatever technique you use. You need to understand that the cheese in the middle makes a difference, okay? It actually makes the burger feel soft in the middle, and it can be done, and can be actually overdone when it feels a little softer than you'd normally use it, okay? I got a bug in my ear. Something flew into my ear right now, okay? So one of the things we're gonna do, this one might take a little bit more time. And of course, you know, if you're, if you're a professional chef or whatever, the best way to do it is to check with a thermometer. If you check that temperature and you've got, we've got turkey, so I'm gonna shoot for 165, which is more than I usually like. Uh, but I'm gonna use this gauge to do it. And I suspect this one is a little bit cooler right now, which is exactly what it's reading. Let's see if we've got a difference with the other ones. And we put this turkey, the turkey and the venison together. We made about a quarter pound patty of each and then we put those together for a half pound patty. It makes a nice size burger, but I don't like, I think it looks good on camera, a giant burger that stands like 16 inches tall, but I hate to eat those. They're just impossible to eat. So we made a burger that hopefully will be very manageable and we're gonna be really simple when we dress it up actually. All right, so these need a little bit more time. And while that's going on, I believe my, uh, Asparagus is ready. So we are ready, and, and I'm just gonna start assembling right now. I'm gonna go ahead and get this asparagus off. Lay that in there. That looks really good, actually.
Yeah, I really miss the mounds of asparagus we used to eat as kids. Man, that was so good, and it's so hard to find. And if you cut them and you end up with some of that woody stuff, it really does taste bad. Yeah. I kind of assume everybody knows this, but really, it is a difference. Like, your fingers can bend it and feel, but your knife just can't do that. So, all right, folks, let's give this another turn. And this grill is, ru is running a little cooler than I'd hope. Now, I don't generally I hate to squish my patty down, but I am going to try to get that back pinned together a little bit. And probably what we'll do. So we are getting close, and if you can get a close-up right there. Again, I'm not I'm not a proponent of mushing your burgers all the time, but if you look at that, that cheese is getting melty in there. What we have in there, you got your Wisconsin cheese out. Look at that on the side. That is sharp cheddar cheese. So that is the kind of cheese that tends to be finicky when you try to melt it. When you cook it this way, it absolutely comes out delicious, smooth, creamy, and it adds a little bit of saltiness. It adds a little bit of a little bit of a kick. And we generally try to keep the cheese inside the meat so you can get a good seal, but I am totally okay because this cheese right here that hits the grill is going to be absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. So I think what we can do is we're going to put these aside. I'm going to move these around since they've contracted a wee bit. And again, my scraper is right here for me, always at my side. I can give that a little bit of a clean, and I'm going to put our buns on here. I'll just do a couple of them for now because we've got that bacon grease on there, that fat. We're going to we're going to make sure and take advantage of it, not let it go to waste. We don't need to butter these buns. That's another great way to do it, but we've got the bacon grease, so we're just going to go ahead and lay them right on there in a little thin layer of that and let those toast. And I am pretty sure we've got one that's going to need more cooking. Oh yeah, that one. See, now that was that one actually is going to need some more cooking. We'll probably leave that on for a bit. This continuous flip, from what I understand, is usually about 30 seconds. That's a little impossible to be that quick with it. I don't think you have to be that um, worried about it. So we're just flipping them uh, enough to keep our bacon. To, we want to develop that crust, but what we do not want is to see it burn. All right, and let's take a check at the temperature, and I'm going to let that read out good this time. Are you sure you want to put your buns on the grill? <laughs> My buns are really hot. Now we've got that around a little over 150. I think that one's ready. Um, one of the things I want to tell you about these, just in case you didn't know, you buy a thermometer like this and, and you need to calibrate it or you need to at least check that it's correct. So what you have to do is, if you have a low temperature thermometer, you've got to put it in some ice water, something that you know is 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and check it. Or if you have a high temperature, you put it in something boiling, so you know what that temperature is, 212 at sea level, I guess, or, um, you know, 100 degrees Celsius. Now, if it's off, they come, this sleeve that they come with actually has a hex for you, to, and a hex, a matching hex on the base of the thermometer. So you use that to hold it, and you can, with your hands, or maybe just carefully with a pair of pliers, you can actually adjust that temperature. But make sure when you buy a brand new thermometer, you check it to see that it's properly calibrated. All right, I'm gonna turn this grill off, and I'm gonna check this one more time with my properly calibrated, hopefully, <laughs> uh, thermometer, and just make sure we have safe temperature inside. Again, I'm leaning to the conservative side. If I was doing a red meat burger, I would probably just poke it. This feels very firm. But again, this is a different kind of meat. It's gonna feel different. And since we're using that cast iron skillet, I turned my, my grill grates off. This is gonna hold some heat. Let's check our buns. They are getting nicely toasted. I hope golden brown, they are hot, man. Um, and we're gonna be ready to assemble this bad boy here pretty soon, all right? And I am reading plenty of temperature on that. I'd like to say that it's gonna be actually a little bit lower than that. Since we've got the temperature turned off, I'm just gonna go ahead and rest these two for us. And we'll let that one cook. That's our problem child right there, but that's okay, no problem. And while these, you know, let's let this burger rest. Let the juices reaccumulate. You all have heard the tale. It does help your cooking. While we're doing that though, let's talk about what we want to pair to drink with our delicious Aaron Rodgers 40 burgers. Now, for my money, 
We've got a burger right now that if you can imagine, we've got that dark, that deep red venison on top. We've got that light colored turkey on the bottom. When we cut into this, we have a dark and tan burger. We are gonna make a black and tan, but we're gonna do it special. We're gonna make a black and tan. Follow me around. Let's go ahead and put together a drink that I think will pair with this burger perfectly. So what you need to do to make a black and tan, of course, we are using, you can use whatever, you can just use a pint glass. We have 24 ounce uh, Pilsner glasses that we're gonna use because we're gonna make a big black and tan. If you're gonna go, go big. <clears throat> For this black and tan, you need Guinness Draft, folks. If you've ever had trouble making a black and tan, if you haven't tried it, you're gonna see how today. But if you've ever had trouble, chances are it didn't have to do with your spoon being wide enough or you not pouring fast enough to get foam on the bottom, chances are it has to do with the fact that you got the Guinness Extra Stout. If you get the Guinness Extra Stout, that is a carbonated beverage. This is nitrogen based, and nitrogen, as it so happens, weighs about half as much as carbon dioxide. So when you have a liquid that is has all that nitrogen dissolved in it, your black and tan will layer out for you, and we're gonna see that in a minute, okay? So what we need for this is our, the first thing we're gonna actually put in is Generally speaking, a bass ale. What we've got is Line and Kugels. This is Wisconsin. This is the Aaron Rodgers 40 burger. So we've got Line and Kugels canoe, canoe paddler. That's a Kolsch. So it's a nice light colored beer you need. You don't want a beer with a lot of hops because you have no aroma hops on your stout. So that's going to cause you fragrance problems and aroma problems if you do that. So this is going to work really nice for us, okay? So I just need to open one each of these, I think. One of the things that we're gonna to add to our stout, because we're doing it a little bit differently, we've got a little bit different beer that we're doing, so we feel like we've already broken the rules. What we made for our burger, because we, we have that turkey burger in there, we actually made a cherry chipotle ketchup. We'll put the recipe in the description for you at some point. We made a cherry chipotle ketchup that is gonna go beautifully with our turkey. From the bottom up, this burger is gonna taste like a turkey club or Thanksgiving dinner with cranberry sauce. From the bottom down, it's gonna taste wild. It's gonna be really delicious. However, because we're using cherry chipotle in our, um, in our burger, um, we decided to go with a cherry sauce uh, for our black and tan. And so what we're gonna do in just a minute, I do wanna check these burgers just really quick. And it, it, yeah, they're, they're very firm, actually, where I would think they might be a little bit overdone. Um, but the keys to the black and tan are, you have to pour slow. You can use a special device. I'm gonna use this. I just made this today. This is a black and tan spoon. All we did is take one of our regular spoons, uh, one of our tasting spoons, basically, and um, we just bent it. I did this with my hands, actually, so that it will lay on the glass, tip forward just about where we like it, and slow down the progress of that Guinness as it floats on top. Now, before we do that, we've got to put in our canoe paddler, and I'm going to do a little bit of a slow pour at a slant uh, at, on a slant at first. I want to control this, okay? I don't want it to get out of hand because you can get that, that head to really blow up on you. We're just going to pour that in there. And I've got a 24 ounce glass, so I'm going to go ahead and use all of this because I know that dark, that black stout is gonna pour out and darken a lot of what we've got going on there. Now I can finish up in the middle if I wanna get a little bit of head, but I've got more control that way, okay? Now to this, and I'm just gonna use a bar spoon for this, but you can actually use the bar spoon for both of these. I'm using the, uh, I'm using the black and tan spoon because I think it's cool because I made it myself. <laughs> But all I've got to do, I want to tip that. I want it to be two things. I want it to be touching the edge of the glass, and I want it to be just touching the top surface of the beer so that it all, it gets slowed down, and you're going to see something really beautiful happen right now. So because we have a cherry chipotle ketchup, we are going to make a black cherry black and tan. And how does that look? That, it's really settling nice. So just about like that, you can do it to your taste. And just be gentle, that's the important thing. 
Now with that done, I'm ready to lay in my spoon. Now this situation, this actually gets a little more difficult because I've got a tall glass and my spoon is gonna float off of that. But what you'll see when I pour this, I'm gonna make what's called a rat tail. And a rat tail you'll see when, when good baristas make your cappuccino, your, your espresso, they're gonna make a rat tail. And what that means is they're pouring off that beverage just so that it, the adhesion pulls it back. You can actually get it to pull back on you. And that's okay. It sometimes makes a mess. But I'm pouring it slow. That's the key. I've got the, the neck of the bottle leaning against the glass for stability. I've got my spoon in place to slow things down. And I'm pouring a rat tail to keep everything under control. It's really layering out nice. Excellent. Is it creating a good head? It's hard to see. It's creating it a little head. bit of a head. I'd like a little more on a Guinness, but that's okay. We'll roll with it. Once I get to the top, I can actually lift up my spoon. This is a better position for your spoon. Just like that, folks. Now, is that pretty or what? Can the light shine through that? Yeah, let's try it. Let's give it a try. Now, guys, we do want to say drink responsibly. Don't anybody Absolutely. get hurt. This is a big beverage. Make sure you know your body weight and just don't drive. That's the best thing to do. How does that look? You see that, the beautiful red at the bottom? It's really dark, it's gonna lay in the bottom, but what you're getting mm -hmm. is basically a black and tan with a little dessert to finish. And I really like that we've tried this. This works very well. As you drink it, this, if you, you can stir it if you want. If you don't stir it, it will stay layered just like this as long as you use the draft. So you can drink it this way and it will start to mix as you drink it and tip it back from drinking. And, and, and once you get to the bottom, you're gonna taste that tart cherry. Now what we have is a tart cherry syrup. This isn't maraschino cherry, it's not gonna be overly sweet. It's gonna be a citrusy, tart little punch at the end of your beverage and your folks are gonna love it, okay? Well, I think we've rested these burgers enough. We're probably ready to go ahead and, and uh, assemble these. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right from here. Actually, I can't do that right from here because I can't reach. But we now have our burgers rested. You can, I mean, that's pretty much optional. So what I want to do is, I'm going to go ahead and leave that. So all we need to do is to assemble this is take our burgers. Oh, I see some juice coming out of that. That looks pretty good. Um, one of the things we're going to do is keep it simple. We did toast the bun, so that's going to help us with that cherry chipotle ketchup. But just as a little bit of protection and a little bit of nice greens on there, it's a little bit red, a little bit green. We've got a nice piece of leaf lettuce. To that, we are going to add our cherry chipotle ketchup. And I'm gonna add quite a bit of this. This is a big burger. And I don't mind getting a little sloppy. I think it will be controllable because the burger itself is not too giant sized. Lay in our burger, add to that our beef, our chicken fried beef fritter. And we've got a stack now. Now we got some meat. This looks like a 40 burger that Aaron Rodgers could be proud of. Now to this, you can add anything you want. You can put another piece of lettuce. You can throw some onions on there. Um, throw a slice of tomato on there. We've got, let me just slip past you. We've got a quick relish that we made. This is nothing more than cucumbers, cubed cucumbers, a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, and some pickling spice, and that's gonna make a delicious topping for our Aaron Rodgers 40 burger. And we are ready for the top bun, which I forgot to toast, but that's okay. All right, now that becomes a pretty big burger. You can see that thing. Look at that now. Is that a thing of beauty or what? And I can't wait to taste it. So let's go ahead and get to that part of it. Um, let's cut this in half and see what we've got. You do wanna check the inside. And an offset serrated knife works really well for this because that fritter is gonna give you some trouble with a straight blade, could, maybe not little crispy on the bottom and let's turn that and see what we've got look at that oh, man. that is pink and perfect in the middle that cheese out and that cheese is coming out we've got that cherry chipotle ketchup on the bottom i don't know i feel like this is going to be a hit why don't we add to that a salad 
we've got a pretty heavy burger. We've got bacon on it. It's got a lot of fat, even though the, the meat doesn't have much fat, which again, it kind of is reflective of Aaron Rodgers. We've got a California slash Wisconsin burger, if I've ever seen one here. Wisconsin cheddar, sharp cheddar in the middle. We've got our Wisconsin beer with our drink. Um, but the meat doesn't have a lot of fat, but it does have the bacon. So we've got enough fat there. We've got enough salt there. You'll notice I didn't add salt and pepper like I normally would with a beef burger. So we're ready to throw with that our salad. It's just a cold salad. Something to add some color, something with some vinegar in it. It's gonna cut some of that fat. And what we did is we just shredded and made a carrot salad, carrot and pepper salad. We shredded some carrots with nothing more than a vegetable peeler to get them nice and thin. We julienne some peppers in that and added some sliced cucumber as well. And seriously, we didn't even make our own vinaigrette. All we did was throw in some Italian dressing and let that stew and cure out for just a few minutes. And you can see the color on that. That is a beautiful plate with our asparagus, our Aaron Rodgers 40 burger, and our salad. I think we are ready to draft some players. What time is it? I gotta check. It is draft time, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Total Tailgating Live. And remember, we'll get you more details if you wanna enter our contest, because we wanna hear about your ideas for a 40 burger. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Brady. I totally appreciate it, and I hope you'll come back. We're going to be doing more recipes, tips, tricks, and have all kinds of fun on Total Tailgating. We'll see you next time.